I think um, for our productivity, from a perspective, the positive the positive focus is its ability to really enhance our productivity. That um, I saw a question in the chat about what about small agencies, even large agencies, or a newsroom. If you think about all the places where we are so um, spread really thin, and we have um, have too much to do in a day, that we can use AI to augment and allocate, delegate those tasks that are really time consuming that may, um, that we can be far more efficient by using AI to help us build what we do. And the, uh, so not only making us more efficient, but also really bolstering our creativity. That um, if, you're, if you're dealing with a writer's block, and you um, need something to shake it, use AI or use AI to, to build out content. And um, we heard about Copilot. Oh my goodness. Um, I saw that in use recently by Frank Shaw from Microsoft where he was showing us, it's like, I'm, and, and he even said, I'm a great writer, but I'm not really good at PowerPoint. You can ask Copilot to turn your paper, your white paper, your blog, your your academic paper into a PowerPoint presentation and boom, it happens so very quickly. So from an efficiency perspective, that's an amazing thing. And the other piece that I would add is that I've worked, um, a lot of my research has been working with disab the disability community. And I believe that AI has the ability to really um, give people who um, may have deficits in certain spaces it has a way to sort of fill in that gap or strengthen what they don't have, where if you have somebody, as an example, who's got a brilliant mind, but isn't able to speak or speaks differently or reads differently, people with dyslexia or who have trouble spelling or writing, that AI can really enhance the work that they do. What else can be done to stop some of these things? Should there be a, a place of sharing of this knowledge. I mean, it's kind of scary that we have to find out that they could cheat and lie because somebody was able to kind of put it out there, but it wasn't common knowledge. It's not something that comes out as let's all share this information or, or, or are there places? I mean, Rudy, when you think about it, you know, how do we stop it before it happens? Um, so currently there, there are filters in place um, to prevent users from asking questions, kind of like uh, we talked about chemical bombs. How do you make a chemical, chemical bomb? Like there's, it won't respond to that. Um, there, there's certain guardrails that are, are in place. Uh, there's research teams thinking about and taking steps to prevent these things and try to think and, 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 and mitigate these uh, risks before they happen. Uh, we're not, you're not gonna get them all, right? Obviously, because it's hard to think about everything that's, that's possible. But there, it's something that's carefully looked at. Um, I think um, one of the things people are really concerned with is like autonomy, which is where the system kind of realizes what it is and kind of takes participates in its own development to make itself better. And, and then you know that's when we lose control. But right. the systems, uh, the way they work today, are, are just not capable of this. I think that's a lot of the sci-fi movies we've been watching throughout the years kind of led us there. Um, we, we're getting closer to that, like I mentioned earlier, but I, I don't think we're quite there yet. And again, I'm, I'm refreshed and encouraged that these conversations like the one we're having today is happening across the board and we're recognizing and approaching this as cautious as we can. I'll start with one pessimistic thing since I've been optimistic this entire time. And it's in response to something that Donna said. So I think AI companionship is awesome because you know a lot of people need that kind of companionship and it's, it's good for mental health. What scares me on the companionship side is, you know, we're already seeing kind of a population decline. There are a lot of single people who are choosing not to have kids. And you are seeing the killer use case in AI being AI girlfriends. If you guys have seen Blade Runner 2049, that you know, the main character has that AI wife. And I'm afraid of a future where people prefer to have an AI partner rather than a real partner or where they can have kids and contribute to population. So that's the pessimistic fear. The optimistic point of view is I think that jobs that people never really wanted to do growing up are not going to be jobs that people will do. Like people will really be able to go after their dreams and aspirations. Um, if you have a goal 
the time it takes to test out that goal and you know sell it to people or learn the skills yourself are going to be there. So I think people are just going to be a lot happier. If you know Maslow's hierarchy, there's self-actualization at the top of it. And I think AI will help us self-actualize and learn, you know, what do I want to do? How can I do it? And what's the path to get there? And that's exciting.